countries negotiating a global treaty to curb plastic pollution fail to reach an agreement. We may close this session today, but the world will still be watching tomorrow and the plastic pollution will still be arriving on our shores and so our work will continue. The existential threat plastic pollution poses for every aspect of life on Earth. Plastic pollution is not just an unsightly nonsense, but an urgent and insidious threat to ecosystems, economies, and human health. Today is Monday, December 2nd, and this is The Issue from VOA. Hi everyone, I'm Lori London. Every piece that we allow to produce without limits is a direct assault on our health, on our nature, and our children. For those blocking progress, you are allowing this crisis to fester and it will kill us. This is just not a treaty about plastics. This is humanity's lie on the sand. Juan Carlos Monterrey, Special Representative for Climate Change and National Climate Change Director of the Ministry of Environment of Panama. More than 3,300 participants, including delegates from over 170 countries and representatives of nearly 450 organizations, meeting in Busan, South Korea, ended the week-long talks Monday without reaching an agreement. More from Reuters correspondent Gabe Singer. While more than 100 nations wanted to cap plastic production, a handful of oil producers were prepared only to target waste. Though meeting chair Luis Vallas Valdivieso tried to sound a positive note. We have succeeded in many areas. However, there are critical matters still need to be agreed. The nations have been gathered at the 5th UN Intergovernmental Negotiating Committee in Busan, South Korea. It was intended to yield a legally binding global treaty and was meant to be the last gathering of its kind. However, countries could agree only to postpone key decisions and resume negotiations later on. At the talks, they remain divided on the basic scope of a treaty. The most contentious items include capping plastic production, managing plastic products, and chemicals of concern. Also the issue of financing to help developing countries implement the treaty. A small number of petrochemical producing nations such as Saudi Arabia have strongly opposed efforts to reduce plastic production. They have tried to use procedural tactics to delay negotiations. Even so, Greenpeace Plastics campaign lead Graham Forbes said the meeting wasn't a waste of time. I think the silver lining is that more than 100 countries representing billions of people stood up for the type of treaty that will reduce plastic production, protect human health, and finance the transition that's going to be desperately needed to address the plastic pollution crisis. An option proposed by Panama and backed by more than 100 countries would have created a path for a global plastic production reduction target while another proposal did not include production caps. The fault lines were apparent in a revised document released by the meeting's chair on Sunday, but that document could still form the basis of a treaty later on. That was Reuters correspondent Gabe Singer. Nations did agree to meet again next year to finish negotiating. UN Environment Program Executive Director Ingar Andersson said she had not heard a single delegate that said they wouldn't want this treaty. The world wants an end to plastic pollution. The world needs an end to plastic pollution. In a statement Monday, the Ocean Conservancy's vice president of conservation ocean plastics said in a statement, quote, with over a garbage truck's worth of plastics entering the ocean each minute, every second counts. So what does it mean to have this product that we humans use in our everyday lives that ends up having an impact on every aspect of life on Earth, including the air we breathe. For insights, I spoke with Judith Enk, president of Beyond Plastics. Thanks so much for joining us. There are so many problems going on in the world, but one of the main existential threats to every single human being and living thing on the planet is 
the climate crisis and the environmental degradation that's happening. Mm -hmm. And yeah. we all know that plastic is a very, very, very big contributor to it. I guess I just want to ask you where things stand. Where is the problem of plastic pollution on the planet right now? What are your biggest concerns? Well, there's an increased awareness of the problem and polls show bipartisan support in the United States to drive down plastic pollution. Really encouraging polling. Republicans, Democrats, independents, people want to see less plastic in their lives. But global plastic production has increased sevenfold since 1980, and it's projected to almost double by 2040. None of us voted for more plastic. Um, I don't think anything tastes better in plastics, but because plastic is made from a byproduct of hydrofracking, uh, the cost of plastic to companies is pretty cheap. So big companies like Amazon and McDonald's and Starbucks are addicted to plastics and the use is just increasing. The United States, by the way, is the largest a producer of plastic waste in the universe. So what you're saying is even though our awareness is increasing, production is also increasing. And what does that mean for the environment? Well, with the increased production of plastic, first you get immense health damage in communities where the plastics are being made. So that's mostly Louisiana, Texas, and Appalachia. And then we're all affected when we use plastic in our daily lives. Unfortunately, health researchers have identified microplastics and nanoplastics in the human lung, blood, brain, testicles, placenta, and breast milk. We are all breathing in or swallowing a large amount of plastic. And the most concerning um, report to come out last March in the New England Journal of Medicine uh, documented the ple presence of plastic in heart arteries. And if you have plastic in arteries heading to your heart, you are five times more likely to suffer from a heart attack or stroke. So the plastics issue has uh, traditionally been viewed as a major problem for the ocean, which it definitely is. Uh, plastics are made from fossil fuels, so there's a climate change connection. Um, but what health researchers are finding about the presence of plastics in the human body is very, very concerning and should be a clarion call for every level of government to commit to reducing the amount of plastic that is produced. Plastics recycling has been an abysmal failure. I'm a big supporter of recycling. Keep recycling your paper, metal, glass, cardboard, compost your yard waste and food waste. But the plastic recycling rate in this country is about 5 to 6%. Uh, the plastics industry wants us to just keep using massive amounts of plastic, toss it in the recycling bin, thinking that it gets recycled. But that is not true. Most plastics do not get recycled. They either get landfilled, burned at incinerators, both in environmental justice communities, or they get littered and eventually make their way into the ocean. So Beyond Plastics Now has released a new report that basically you are hoping that draws the attention to the next president of the United States. What's the message you're trying to, to get across to the next administration. We have some very specific policy recommend recommendations based on reducing the generation and production of plastics. Plastic recycling has been an abysmal failure. We should stop um, participating in that magical thinking. We need the new president to direct the State Department to improve its position in the international plastics treaty negotiations. We need the new president to support packaging reduction, support legislation in Congress to create a national bottle bill mandatory deposits on beverage containers. We want a really comprehensive environmental justice approach so that the pe people living near plastic production facilities have their health protected. We also want the U.S. Labor Department to start working on what's called a just transition. So workers working in the plastics sector are transitioned into different jobs 
that do not poison the planet, but still give them a living wage paycheck. We are nonpartisan. We want them to take this issue seriously. And, you know, the funny thing about this issue is I've worked on environmental policy for decades. I've met many climate change deniers. I've never met a plastic pollution denier because you see Mm -hmm. the evidence of the problem everywhere. Thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us. My pleasure. It's really crazy when we think about it, too, because we take so much of what we use on a daily basis. We don't think about what it's made of. But if you look around, it's everywhere. Plastic in our cars, in our kitchens, in our the wrappers of our food, even the foods that we order from clean, organic places come wrapped in some sort of plastic somewhere. Um, So it, it really is everywhere. But the fact that it breaks down in these microplastics that we're breathing and, and, and is in our oceans is just terribly frightening, and, and it's just all connected. I'm sure we'll have a lot more to discuss on this very topic, including when the talks do resume and see what happens from there. You've been listening to The Issue from The Voice of America. On behalf of all of us here at VOA, thank you so much for joining us. You can follow The Issue on X and Facebook at VOA The Issue. And for news 24-7 on our website at voanews.com. In Washington, I'm Lori London. We'll talk to you tomorrow.